ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frank Sicari, and this is our eighth Life Altering Event Chat. Now, most of you know, I host an internet radio show named Life Altering Events. And after 56 episodes, 180,000 people have heard the show in 30 countries. I have met and now call friends some of the most dynamic, interesting, intelligent, and truly amazing people. Each of their stories has enriched my life far more than it has enriched theirs. And they've also enriched the lives of people all over the world. As I look back on these 56 episodes, I was looking for some kind of common thread, some common theme. And the theme that I've discovered is each of my guests have found the courage to overcome a fear that had taken hold of their life. Now, fear is a natural reaction. It is part of our flight or fight stimulus, which is intended to protect us. It goes back to the beginning of time. But fear also has a paralyzing effect. Now, Emily, Emily Dickinson wrote, if your nerve denies you, go above your nerve. It's implied that fear is always going to be there. It's always going to be lurking underneath our daring and luring us to linger in safer spaces. Nothing's accomplished without taking a risk, and taking a risk involves overcoming fear. Uncontrolled fear is where hope and trust and innovation and courage go to die. Many unhappy lives are the result of failing to overcome fear. Fear, however, is a choice. A guest on my show, the great Mel Robbins said, and I'm going to read this to you, you don't have what you want because your thoughts and feelings are holding you back. Now, resistance to change, whether it manifests itself as fear or anger or stubbornness, keeps you on the safe and familiar path. By taking action, even when you don't want to take action, you start to steer your life in a new direction. And that's from Mel Robbins, and that was in her book, Stop Saying You're Fine. Now, I speak to so many people who at one time had a dream or a vision, but they lacked the courage to face their fears, and they just settled. I recently spoke to a good friend and a customer who had achieved a fair amount of success over his life. He told me he went back to visit his hard luck hometown and after 48 years. It's a small town on Lake Erie that never recovered from the loss of the steel mills many, many years ago. While he was there, he encountered a few friends from his old neighborhood where he, was, where he grew up. Now, these are people he's known his entire life. And they decided to meet for lunch and catch up. Now, they're sitting in a restaurant overlooking Lake Erie. And my friend looks out over the lake and he sees the old power plant that once employed over 2,000 people and it's now vacant, not, not even a car in the parking lot. And then he looked off to his right and he saw a big empty field full of weeds. And that big empty field once housed one of the five steel mills that employed over 15,000 people. Now as he drove to the restaurant, he w drove through what was once a very vibrant downtown, which was now an awful lot of abandoned and boarded up buildings. So you gain the picture of what that environment was. Well, one of the friends while they were at lunch said to him, you know, you were lucky. You had the opportunity to get to college and to get out of here and build a lucrative career. I never had that opportunity. My friend said his initial reaction was complete and total anger, but he maintained control. He took a deep breath, collected his thoughts, and then he replied, there was no luck involved. I made a choice to get out of here. Growing up, we all imagine that someday we go to college, we become successful. We all had the same vision and dream back then. The man continued, when it was time to go to college, I didn't have the money, and my parents certainly didn't have the money to send me, so I made a choice. I chose to join the military. Now, it delayed my vision for four years while I served, but I was able to save some money, and then with the help of the GI Bill, I was able to go to college and start a career. 
One of the other friends looked at him and said, you know, we remember when you did that. We thought you were crazy. You enlisted during the Vietnam War. There's no way we were gonna do that. The man took another deep breath and said, well, gentlemen, I guess we all get to live with our choices. Now, what happened here? All these friends at one time had a dream and imagination and a vision, but only one made the choice to do whatever it took to address and overcome his fears. So what choice are you gonna make? Are you gonna say, I am what I am, and nothing I do is gonna change anything? Or, or are you gonna say, what if, and have the courage to take the action needed to face your fears? I recently read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, and he wrote, taking action is about living fully. Inaction is sitting in front of your TV every day for years because you're afraid to be alive or take a risk of expressing of what you are or what you can be. That's fear taking hold of you. You can have many great ideas in your head, but upon, but what makes the difference is the courage to overcome your fear and to take action. Without action upon an idea, there will be no manifestation, no result and no reward. Joseph Campbell said, the, fear, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't have an opportunity. It's not a reason or an excuse. It's a choice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my goal today is to give you hope. During hard times, please remember to do three things. Look up, get up, never, ever give up. Keep moving forward, face your fears, and better times and better people will come into your life. And as I say every week, let me leave you with this. The secret to walking on water is to know where the rocks are. Give me a call. I'll help you find those rocks. Join us again next week when we discuss another life-altering event. Thank you.